Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't it feel good just to close your eyes and shut in with the Lord. And those words, those words today, amen, resonate. Thank you. You could be seated. I have an usher come and take our Sunday school offering here today. If, amen. Thank you. Let me start out by saying thank you, Lord, for the rain. I know a lot of folks always want it to be sunny. Here you go, brother. Everybody wants it to be sunny and all that. Well, we need the rain. We need the rain. And uh, it's been great. It's been good. And um, especially for the farming community. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, my grass is crunchy. Uh, It's either, uh, yeah, yellow and crunchy and it's... uh, Kind of Captain Crunch out there. Uh, First Timothy th- chapter four is where we're going to go this morning. First Timothy chapter four. Thank you for being in Sunday school today. Um, I feel very important uh, to talk today about this subject, and I posted. I don't do it very often, but I posted it even on Facebook last night about looking forward to talking about investing in their future, and uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. 1 Timothy chapter 4, looking forward to Brother Hemshire being with us here in the 1115 service, so amen. I'm looking forward to even a great service this afternoon. Uh, Chapter 4, verse number 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Somebody say devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Verse 4, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. How many is thankful? For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up uh, the words of faith and good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. But refuse, somebody say refuse, refuse profane an old wives' tale and exercise thyself rather to unto godliness. For bodily exercises, Exercise profiteth little. Amen. Those of us that are just a little bit overweight, that's thank you, Jesus. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise, having promise of the life that now and of that which is to come. Verse 9. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, specifically of those of that believe. Verse 11, these things command and teach. This is, this is the part here we want to look at. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Verse 13, till I come, give attendance to reading, to the exhortation, and to the doctrine. I want to draw from verse number one all the way back to verse number one. The Spirit speaketh expressly. Amen. I want to talk about today investing in their future. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for our class today. I ask you, God, to bless your word, God, which is blessed. Lord, bless our ears. and Lord, anoint us, God, to hear what you have, Lord. We ask you for your blessing today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, I want to try to hurry and get into this today. It's important. Uh, let me let me set the preface here real quick. Uh, I want to make sure our class. Somebody say our class. We are the established saints. We are the elders. We are, Amen. A class I think that's uh, worthy to understand. 
our place in the body of Christ in the church. And uh, uh, it's, it's important that we realize the need. And I, I, I'm a firm believer what we're doing and what we are and how we conduct ourselves and how we handle our lives and how faithful we are to God is important for the next generation coming up. And I point over to the Sunday school department because that's what I'm talking about. We're investing in their future. And uh, I want us to realize, and I've been talking about this a little bit if you've picked up on it, it's important for us to realize our place in the time that we're living right now. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of crazy stuff in the world. But we've got to understand when it comes to serving God, we are very important. Our life is important on how we conduct ourselves and how we project ourselves for the next generation to come. Now, we know as we draw closer to the coming of the Lord, uh, the Word of God warns us there's going to be a great apostasy. Uh, you know, simply apostasy is a departure from faith. Uh, actually, the Greek word, I can't say it, but it, there's a Greek word uh, that says it means to revolt or to remove oneself from apostolic doctrine and principles. And uh, I would say this here, it's happening. It's taking place, and it's not just in uh, general areas, it's all over. Put up verse number one, if you would, please, because he says that in latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Look at this. The spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times, some shall depart from the faith and giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. Uh, 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 there's a subtle spirit uh, that will seduce mankind, uh, God's creation, and cause many or some to accept Clever imit imita imitations. Somebody say imitations. Imitations. It looks, uh, I use the term reasonable facsimile. Looks a lot alike, but not the same. What we need in the church today is more anointing. Not, not more programs, not more stuff. We need more anointing. We need more prayer. We need more of asking God to do His will and not ours. That's what the church world needs today because those things, if you, if you know the Word of God very well at all, those things are the drawing power that draws people. Because people today, regardless of what we may think about this generation that's coming up, people today want something sincere. They want something honest. There's all kinds of fake. There's all kinds of phony. There's all kinds of those that put on a facade or have a nice imitation of things. But the church needs to be real. The anointing of God, need, they, they need to feel something when they come in. And we need to feel it. And we need to make sure it stays alive. But there is a subtle spirit, just like it has from the, from the garden on. It, it'll seduce and it'll cause many to accept clever imit imitations. And uh, we know that Satan is the master of deception. We know that because uh, a, sub a subtle spirit knows how to... Uh, minister or speak to our needs. You see, when I project myself as needing something, guess what? Not only God hears what we're asking, but the adversary as well. And if we're not careful, we'll, sa we'll, we'll fall into the trap of, of accepting a substitute or an, imi an imitation of what God really wants in our life. God wants to bless I don't care what the economy does. I don't care. God wants to bless his people. And, he, and I believe he does bless his people. We, we are the ones that have kind of shifted blessing into having things. The more I have, the more blessed I am. I don't believe that's true at all. In fact, I found people that the more they have, the less they are to give to God and the less they are to give their time of God and energy to God and pray to God because if you don't really have much of a need of much, that's why sometimes God allows us to, listen to me, I'm thankful when God allows me to go through something that makes me start praying earnestly, fervently, and, 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 and deeply deeply. And reach out to him. That's, that, that's, that's a good thing. Now, just the term, just the term seducing spirit, it translates from Greek, planos, which implies going away or wandering out of the way. 
I'm talking to our class today because we've got to be very careful how we allow things, even in our last mile or last leg of our life, we've got to be careful, not for our sakes, but for the generation to come. Because what we're doing here today is investing in the generation coming up. We're making sure there's a church. And we should make sure there's a church on fire. A church with anointing. A church with a passion. Come on. It's not about just coming in and feeling comfortable and feeling good about ourselves. Come on, that's a worldly way. <laughs> you know, I heard somebody say one time, say, well, when I get depressed, I just go out and go on a spending spree. It makes me feel better. Well, I don't know. I tried that once. Three months later when the debt piled up, I was trying to figure out how to pay for it. I'm thinking, man, felt good for a minute. And that's just, that's the way it is with the adversary. What Satan offers today is just temporary. We know that as a Bible class. We know that by experience. Our young people may not have experienced all that yet. That's why we've got to train them up in the way that they should go. Not in the way that they think they should go or not in the way that they want to go. That's why we as parents and grandparents, we've got to make sure. Listen, it's not about being buddies with our grandkids and our kids. It's about letting them know that what we stand for when it comes to the things of God is real because they're going to need that in their generation, especially as we, especially as we begin to fall off. I had to rephrase that because it came to my mind more harsh. Listen, because if you there's a going away, there's a wandering. You know, someone asked me about the falling away of the church and when do you believe that's going to happen. I believe it started when the church was born. I've said this before. It's just like a child when it's born. We don't talk about it. We don't want to think about it. But when that baby is born, the minute it's born, it starts dying. The time is limited. And it's the same way when the church was born, amen, the greatness of the church, even as a child grows, as we grow, it's great. There's a lot of experiences. But as the church grows, guess what? There's a falling away. It, there's coming a time when, when the Word of God says what it says is going to happen. We've, and we've got to understand that we've got to get to the place to where there can be an end time. I believe we're living in the last days. But I believe that we've got to understand as a body of believers that we've got to get there. Things have got to happen. We've been warned about that. Because if we listen carefully to the language that's being used in our society, whether it's political, whether it's the news, whether it's in education, we've got to understand false doctrine, false teaching, ideas that are disguised in language and appearance they, that will appear, uh, it will appeal to those who seek self-justification. We're teaching our generations, amen, coming up. If we, we've now have kind of woken up to, hey, listen, this is, Things has been going on for quite some time. Our kids have been taught things uh, that we really didn't know, and now we're finding disgusting while we were just kind of having a good time serving God. The church has always got to be the church first. Not allow things and ideas. You know, one of the worst, one of the worst things that a person can do uh, especially in our age group, our, our Sunday school class, is start looking around. Well, they do it. He's doing it. She's doing it. That one. Listen, one thing I want to say first, you're going to be judged by what you know. What God has placed in me, I have to answer to God for. I, you may not have the same revelation. You may not have the same depth uh, 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 of serving God as someone else. And you may not see some things like they do. They may not see them like you. That's what makes diversity. But there is, and you've heard me say this a lot lately, there is a culture in the world that will try to creep into the church. And our generation should be mindful and watchful, and we know what to look for. Because we've probably already experienced it in our experiences. That's why we've got to stand strong for the generation coming up, uh, these kids coming up. 
And I don't want to be one of those that says, oh, I, it scares me to death to think about the generation coming up. No, every generation had to deal with their own issues and problems. They'll deal with them hopefully better than we do. That's the whole process. We want our kids to have things better as, than we had, and we've made sure that ha has happened in a lot of ways. It's the same way spiritually. I don't want my kids just to ride on the coattail of what I had or somebody else had, amen, years ago. They've got to get that experience for themselves, and we, the generation now, our class, we've got to make sure that we stand for it. We're investing in their future, in the church, in the Lord. People don't have to go to church today. Where's the church going to be a few years from now? Because look around. There's a falling away of people that desire even to be in church. Oh, well, it'll be there next week. Oh, well, it's just Bible study. That right there ought to be signs, uh, send up flags to us and say, wait a minute, I've got to get a love for the Word of God. I've lost my first love. I've gotten a little bit, you know, uh, cold. Or, uh, it's one thing to be cold or hot, but I, I just don't want to be lukewarm. That's what gets me in trouble. When I'm just kind of halfway there, not too much, not too much, it, it, when it comes to being spiritual. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. So we, we know by experience that these things happen. But thank God for his word. Thank God the word speaks expressly. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart. It's, listen, it's going to happen. Look at your neighbor and say, man, we don't want it to happen, right? God don't want it to happen. It's not being told to us because God wants it to happen. It's being told to us as a sign. We know through the parables that there's a sign when we see leaves on a fig tree, we know summer's nigh. Come on, we can look around. We may not know what's going on, but when we see things popping up and, 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 and growing out and coming in, then guess what? We know something's going on. It, it don't take a spiritual person to see this world sprouting. The last day's sign. We see it happening. And, of course, those of us that's been around a while, we, we say this tongue-in-cheek, God's going to have to repent if he don't come back soon. God's going to have to repent if he don't come back soon. Because Sodom and Gomorrah, because all, if he don't, because of what his word says, if he don't come back soon, he's got to repent. Because look at around. We, we, that's how extreme we think things are. But he's in control. He's, he's, he's told us ahead of time, be watchful. Remember I was talking a couple weeks ago about, about the watchman. Be watchful. It's our duty, class, to be watchmen. It's our duty to watch over so that we can prepare the generation coming up, so that we can help some cross over. Come on. You know what I'm saying. Now, the word expressly. I don't know if you've ever thought about it much. The word expressly translated from Greek, it's a ratos, which means clearly or distinctly. We have a clear and distinct voice and word from God because he said the spirit speaketh expressly. That, is, that means the spirit speaks clearly and distinctly. Now, let me say this, especially to this generation, because we know we've heard it from the, the generation behind us. I don't watch the news because it depresses me. I don't like to follow what's going on because it gets me down. You better wake up. Because we know by experience, the Lord has warned us, the Word of God's warned us, if we don't want to come to church because it gets me down, it may, then that, guess what? It ought to make us realize where we're living at in our life. Because when I come and I hear God warn me about something, I'm glad and I'm excited. Come on, some are excited for the rain, some are not. I'm glad for the rain. I'm glad that when God warns us and tells us, listen, keep your eyes open and watch because the world will try to steal everything that I've given you and warned you about. Don't get mad because you see it happening. 
We know by experience. We, we're not to get bothered by it. It's something to be concerned because we have loved ones, we have family, we have situations. And, of course, we want to see things go on. But we also know if we just learn to humble ourselves a little bit, God can heal. I believe God could kick the can down the road. You know what I mean by saying that? I'm worried about my grandkids. I'm worried. Listen, if I'm, if I'm concerned about that, guess what? Lord, Lord, heal us. Lord, help us. Help us to be a nation that gets back to you. Help us to be a people that really are appreciative of everything that we have, not just the things that we enjoy. Expressly, clearly, distinctly, we have a clear, we have a distinct voice, word from God that the last day leaves, amen, the leaves are there. We see things happening. We know they're, they're budding. We know it's coming forth. And so it's clear. I say this tongue-in-cheek. It's clear so that here should be no confusion. We're living in a, a time when I'm not talking about world. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about news. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about spirit. I'm talking about Christians. I'm talking about people of God. So much confusion. God can't be pleased in that. Cannot. Why? He is not the author of confusion. He don't make somebody get angry and go down the road and start a church which has happened for years. That's why we have the smorgasbord of churches all over, the, all over our North America, all over. God, that, God doesn't cause that confusion. And we, we, think, we think and we try to, well, that's a good thing. No, it's not a good thing because it causes confusion and it causes people to divide things and God's not in those kind of things. A house divided cannot stand. So it's clear that there should be no confusion or misunderstanding about last day spiritual conditions. Why? Because he said expressly, clearly, and distinctly. It should be, should be no, no, no arguing about it. In the last days, people are going to fall away. They're, look at the Spirit speaketh expressly, clearly, distinctly, that in the latter times, some shall depart from faith and giving heed to seducing spirits. What's a seducing spirit? Something that you look at, something that you long for, something that you want, that spirit will talk to you. We know by example, don't we, class? That's why our investing in the future for our kids, doing what we do with Sunday school, doing what we do with church, amen, defending the Word of God, standing up for truth, trying to live our life the best we can live for God is important because it's an investment to the things that God loves. God loves people, not just our generation. Look at me. Just because we used to see the old, sing the old hymn book songs don't make us special. Come on, get that out of your mind. Don't make us special because, because then the words meant something to us. Because of how we were raised and what we grew up in. Now coming up, it's the same principle, just different manner of method for the next generation. We should be happy that they're here. We should ha be happy that they're involved. We should be happy that they worship and run. Amen. Even if they, well, they're in their self. We need to get out of that kind of attitude. Amen. And we get, need to get that mind set that says, listen, God wants to be clear about what's going on. It's clear. It should be clear. Now, let me make a very clear point. Any, somebody say any, any teaching. Any teaching, I don't care how good they are, I don't care what kind of label they have, PhD, IOU, whatever's behind and before their name, it don't matter. Any teaching that is not supported by the Word of God, Scripture, is false doctrine, period. People running all over this world, doing all kinds of crazy, chasing all kinds of dreams. There's no mothership. 
You don't need tennis shoes and four dollars to make it. And our generation should remember that. Generation coming up probably have no, no idea what I just said. Some of you probably don't either. I don't know. Maybe I'm still too old. Remember the group out west? Laid down, laid down four dollars, had their tennis shoes on, all alike. Waiting for the mothership. Okay, I just want to make sure we on the same page. But it's true. The Word of God says there's a false doctrine. Doctrine, there's a false teaching. There's a false teaching that's around. And when it comes to the basic fundamentals of truths that detail the necessity of the new birth, guess what? Anything other than that, I believe, is false doctrine. I don't care what's behind it. It's false doctrine. Because if it's not teaching you how to make heaven your home and how to get to heaven, then it's really worthless anyway. No man shall see the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and of spirit. You've got to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How does that happen? There's an evidence that comes by speaking in tongues. When you're buried in a watery grave, why? For the remission of your sins. Without that, your sins has not been remitted. Because we're not in obedience to the word, which is expressly clear and distinctive. But they're falling away from it because it draws the crowds. They're fixed. Put up John 3, 5 and 6 just real quick. Look at it. Accept a person. Accept a person. Jesus said, listen, I say accept a person, be born of water and of spirit. He cannot enter into the, listen, you got to have it to get in. That's the ticket. That's the key. That's what Peter preached in Acts chapter 2. Repent and be baptized. Who? And not just you. The, what, you're doing, what you're doing will invest in who? Your children. And those that are far off. The next generation. Investing in the future. Oh, Lord, I'm running out of time. It's not. It's irrescindable. It's, you can't take it back. It's non-negotiable. You can't. What, what the Lord gives to us, it, 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 you understand? It's the same principle as last day things. Last day, there's going to be a falling away. Last day, there's going to be people, amen, just get caught up in seducing spirits. Tell me what I want to hear. Make listen to me. I, this this really bothers me in the in the church body. We've got to feel good all the time about ourselves. That's to me. That's horrible. I'm sorry. It's vain. When I've got to feel good about myself twenty four seven, something's wrong with me. Why? Because I know I'm a child of God. I may not be perfect, but the character I have, what God has helped me develop in, that's what I want to be. Amen. To be pleasing to God. We're all not the same. That's why God is so unique. Amen. We're all not the same and not supposed to be the same in that regard. Your eyebrows just a little lower than mine. You may have a unibrow. One ear may be, you know, I, so what? I, I may need a tummy tuck. I don't know where they tuck it, but listen, we get so wrapped up in how we look and how we feel. I want to feel the Lord. I want to feel his anointing. I don't want to be entertained at church. I want to feel the presence of God. I want to know that people are praying when I close my eyes and not just standing there like bumps on a log. Come on, that's what it's about. Amen. It's about those that around me that want to please God and want to get a hold of God. Because I know these things are coming. But I also know that there's a harvest and the laborers are few. I do know that I can get sidetracked and not want to do things because it's happened in my spiritual walk. 
I've got eyes on watching other people and what they did or didn't do. And I thought, well, if they don't have to do it, I don't have to do it. And I got spanked by the Lord in my younger years. But that which is born of the Spirit is what? I mean, it's not hard to figure out. Spirit things are spirit things. Fleshly things are fleshly things. When I'm all about how I look and feel, that's my flesh. And when that's 90% of my thoughts and my process, then guess what? I've got to bring my body and bring my mind under control. Wait a minute. This ain't, this ain't a good thing. We, forgive me for saying, but we stroke each other so much. Oh, you look so nice. In the back of our mind, we're like, well, I wouldn't have wore that, but that's okay. I, I, I want to be nice. Oh, no, I, I know, no, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, it's so vital to us, the elder class, the older class. Why? Because we must keep and we must remain committed to the doctrine for our future generation, for our kids, for those coming up. We've got to hold on to the truths because we can see it diminishing all over the spiritual world today. Amen. The church world today. We see it happening and it looks like they're making it. It looks like they're maintaining. It looks like they're doing everything we are, but there's an imitation. I don't care if people are speaking in tongues like you. That don't make them spiritual. That just, oh, that's just the word of God. In the last day, he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh, but not all flesh will serve God. Not all flesh will live for God. Many are called, few are chosen. Not all flesh is going to make it. He's going to look at some of us and say, hey, listen, I don't know who you are. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. God don't lie. We get caught up in the other stuff. Now, Satan's assault on the church because he understands it established his final attempt to weaken and to immobilize the church. The purpose is to, pre- to prevent, prevent to, to keep us from our mission. What is our mission? It's a commission. To, to reach the lost. To go to them. The purpose, the purpose is to reach the coming generation. What's that called? It's called evangelism. Put up verse 13, the last verse here. I'm, I'm winding down here. I'm about done. It says, give attendance to the word. To exhort. What's exhort? Preaching, it's preaching. The doctrine, to doctrine, what's doctrine? Teaching. Give attendance to the Word. Give attendance to preaching, to teaching. That's what he's saying. The, 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 the very last of this, we know, we know what, but listen, what we've got to do is we've got to remain so that we stay invested in our youth and those coming up behind us, this community. We are the investment. Stand with me. We are. You're valuable. You realize how valuable you are? Listen, I want you to know something. I've earned this white hair. Every stinking one of them. Does that say stinking? Every one of them. 2 Timothy 3 7. Look at this. Our last scripture. As we near the end of this age and see the battle between good and evil, false doctrines, false things, prophets, false teachings, knowledge shall what? Knowledge shall increase. Knowledge is going to increase. Look around. We're supposed to be the smartest generation on planet Earth that's ever.